What is the reality of Spencer Dinwiddie? Because at times he was masterful here in Dallas. And immediately I was like, oh man, what a great trade. Like I, I still remember going back to the trade deadline and Reggie saying the Mavs traded for Spencer Dinwiddie. And we were all like, oh, wow. <laughs> no, they didn't. I think yeah. I said no. Yeah, they yes. You did. Well, it was when we said, oh, and they trade Porzingis. Because we were like, oh, yeah, they traded yeah, yeah. for Dinwiddie. Oh, oh, yeah, great. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, they traded KP. And you go, no, they didn't. Because, <laughs> like, that seemed like an absurd trade. And right. that, as it went along, you see how much, like, fit matters in terms of basketball. And I think we were all pretty stoked pretty quickly. And he looked like he'd be a great fit here. Still can be a great fit here. And then you also saw him disappear at times in the playoffs. Yeah. And so now with so many people suggesting that he's going to be your secondary ball handler. Right. I, I am curious, what is the reality of Spencer Dinwiddie? So we were looking this up and the reality I don't know. It goes the, all over the place. With the Mavericks last year, he was pretty much a 50-40 guy, which is unheard of when you're a 50-40, really 90, right? A few people, Nash, Dirk. There's there's some other people I forget, but when 50-40-90, Larry Bird, I believe, was one of the first, is 50% shooting, 40% from three, and 90% free throw shooter. Now, he's not a 90% free throw shooter, but with the Dallas Mavericks, he was pretty much in the regular season a 50% shooter and a 40% three-point shooter. For his career, yeah. in his career, he's a 41% field goal guy, and he's a 32% uh, three-point okay. shooter. So that's eight years of putting in work. Of That's what his numbers are over an eight-year career, over a 25-game situation. I have his... 23. Playoffs, 23 yeah. over. I have his playoff stuff pulled up to try to give me a better and, idea. And only one of those years did he really break out of the low 30 or okay. worse rut in terms of three-point shooting. Okay. And so that's why hitting, and it had been a while, that's why him hitting 40%, even in a smaller sample size, yeah. fairly stunning. So, Kevin, here's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping he's in between his career average okay. and his maverick average. Okay, I got you. Because if he goes back to being a 41% field goal shooter and a 32% three-point shooter, this is why every team moves off of him. So yeah. for the people that were on social media, and there were a few that interacted with me, thank you for interacting, but so I'm like, he has a point guard. I'm like, Literally every time he's been a point guard that people have relied on, whether it was Brooklyn or whether it was Washington of recent times, they said, we have to do better than this. This isn't, we can't do this anymore. He's not good enough. Now he was, be, he would be our second guy, but last year, him being our third guy just fit in so great yeah. with the Dallas Mavericks. Everything fit in better with Dinwiddie when he was your third type of ball yeah. handler and always your second ball handler on the team for the most part, because it was very rare that he was off or that he was on the court when Brunson and Luca were sitting down. Right. I know it happened every once in a while. I can't remember them all, but if you ask him to be out there on the court and lead an offense with Bradley Beal and um uh Kuma, uh, not Kuma, but um the dude from Gonzaga that went from LA to Washington, Kuzma, Kyle Kuz Kuzma, sorry. Okay. So when you start asking him, hey, we need you to lead these guys. Yeah. He can't. Yeah. He literally cannot play the point guard role and really lead a team, whether it was Brooklyn or whether it was Washington. Another against Dinwiddie. I like him. I'm glad we have him on the team. But you're asking too much of him, I think, if you're going to say, Luca, you're our ball handler. Dinwiddie, you're our second ball handler, and you're going to have to handle 15 minutes a night where there's no other ball handlers on the court because Luka needs 15 minutes off. And the only other person that can handle those 15 minutes on this team, as it is of today, is you. And you're not going to have another ball handler on court. Tim Hardaway Jr. can't handle the ball. He cannot pass the ball. When you pass it to him, he's shooting the basketball. I love Dorian Finney-Smith. Dorian Finney-Smith improved so much during this year. Love him. In fact, I think now, after what he did in the playoffs and everything, you got a deal at about $14 million yeah. a year. But he's not a ball handler passer. He's getting better at it, but he's still, he's a catch and shoot guy. Bullock is even more of a catch and shoot guy. So I think you're asking way too much of Dinwiddie to just be your second ball handler with not really a third guy behind him. I'm hoping Jaden Hardy can become that guy, but that's a lot to ask of a just turned 20 year old. Okay. Let's say, let's go off of the idea that Jaden Hardy is one year away. All right. Like you're not going to get that, what you want from him for at least another year. Right. All right. Could the configuration, do you feel any better if it's 
let's say 10 minutes of Dinwiddie, five minutes of Green or Nilakina, like cycling that down at all, Ooh. does that make a difference for you or does that make it worse for you? Because that did not sound like a good ooh. Neil Aquino was moved off of the New York uh, Knicks because he can't play the point guard. Like literally, they they drafted with, him. I get it. They drafted him to be their Jalen Brunson yeah. and way better, right? Because he was drafted, I believe, eighth overall. He in the was. Draft. So they thought that they had drafted the future point guard of the New York Knicks for the next ten years, and he couldn't play the right. point guard role. He's an off the ball guy. He's a defender. He's he's a good defender. He's a good defender. He's a he's an okay ball handler who can't pass. I just don't think now he's only 23 about to be 24. So there's, there's room to grow. He can still, I don't think you're a finished product at 23 years old. Some guys are, some guys aren't. I think he can get better, but I don't want to, are we at the point where we want to take a guy who's been five years in the NBA and say, Hey, we want to put you back in the role that in your first three years in the NBA, you failed at so much. The New York Knicks didn't want to put you on the basketball court. Okay. That's scary. Josh green then because and I'm just going through the options. Right. I'm not saying they're desirable options. Josh Green then because we have seen him, he he'll he'll pass. Yes. He has the ability I think to be an off-ball guy who does move the ball. He scares the crap out of me and should of all the coaches too. I bet the coaches like under True Serm would say, "Yeah, he scares the crap out of us too." Because he's a running passer. Right. He likes jumping in the air. He does. Picking up his dribble while jumping in the air and hoping that the guy gets open while he's in the air for a second. Yeah. He loves running really fast and then passing off of it and hoping that it works out. But when you watch the best guys, Chris Paul, Luka Doncic, you know, start naming guys, whether I don't know James Harden's different, but whoever you think, LeBron James, how many times are they consistently going a thousand miles an hour while jumping in the air and making passes? Because Josh Green loves doing that and they got to get that out of his game yes it can happen every once in a while but the you got a 90 percent of the time be two feet on the ground with two ball two hands on the ball to pass i get the other you know hey nash whoever yeah one-handed passes happen you know watching josh giddy play summer league basketball i love that kid and he plays under control and i'm not saying josh green needs to slow down a lot but as Derek Harper says on the telecast, and, and you could talk to Devin Harris about this, and he learned this as he grew up too in the NBA, you got to learn when to slow and when to go. And Josh Green is at 1,000 miles an hour 100% right. of the time. And he has no other type of game yet. And so I hope he improves his game. He's a young guy too. But he loves jumping and passing, and that causes turnovers left and right. And 